Um, my name is Andrew Faust. I've been practicing permaculture design in the Northeast for somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 some years. And why we're here to talk about permaculture is primarily to look at the Occupy Wall Street movement from the perspective of where do we go from here. And what permaculture is challenging us to do is to say, can we design a better world? Can we design a world that includes us as caring, conscious, aware human beings who have real needs and have a real sense of personal integrity? Because it's not about growth or not growth. It's not about anti-anything as much as it is about positively supporting in generative ways what it is that we would rather see and engaging our energy in helping that to grow. And what I'm suggesting is that right now we're all held hostage to a global import-export centralized corporate oligarchy that has manipulated our legislature to do nothing but represent a corporate government collusion to make money for a very, very small number of people. Our food coming from 1,500 miles away, clothing and materials that we're housing ourselves with and meeting our needs with coming from uh, an insanely wide web of processes, extraction, refining, shipping and transportation networks to the point to where if any little cog in that ridiculously hyperextended infrastructure has a crack in it, suddenly we're not going to be able to feed ourselves or meet our needs very well within say about 48 hours of that kind of serious infrastructural glitch. You know you need water to drink. You know you need air to breathe. You know that you need a caring and loving community that has the time to take care of one another. And when we think about our bodies and water and the fundamental needs of life, we find that we're made up of 70% water, the earth is made up of 70% water, and in effect we are walking electromagnetic biochemical organisms who are very sensitively tuned in to the world around them, who are being inundated with a huge array of industrial, chemical, militarized inputs that are not good for our well-being and we're finally as an entity socially putting out those sensitive antennae that are causing us to wake up. So if you just looked at what the EPA says about chronic non-compliance with the Clean Air Act, chronic non-compliance with the Clean Water Act, right, you would see that we already have an infrastructure and an economy that's never once actually been able to make the bottom line. It's done nothing but made money off of continuing to rape, loot, pillage, and plunder the American people. Who are we when we start to say, by the people, for the people? And I like to define that and say, we are the people who care. We are the people who care about human beings more than individual separate fiefdoms that accrue wealth at the cost of human well-being. We are the people who care for the matrix of life from which we know we all come, to which we know we will return. Defining who we are, what is our identity, who is it that we want to be, what does it mean to be a human being? Because as a society, we don't even really have an agreement upon what that entails. What is our true humanity? I like to say primarily the main transition we need to be involved in is transitioning from a consumer society into a culture of producers. Because the main thing that's caused the malaise, the disease, the degree of propagandized rhetoric that has stolen our true personal freedom, the way that's been pulled out from under us without even realizing that it's been taken away, it's partially because we don't have the basic skills to feed ourselves, to make our clothing, to make a structure. And how we gain those skills in part is by disengaging from this morally and ethically diseased society, accumulating less stuff that we don't need, and paring down our expenses so that we can begin to direct 
what it is we do with our personal behavior to support what it is that we would rather see. And until we have an economy that begins to transition out of a situation where we are consuming 30% of the world's resources, throwing out 99% of what we consume within six months of having purchased it, 87% of what we're throwing out was mined and extracted materials that came from very highly energetic processes and high impact activities that go on all around the world. Right? This is an insane economy. And there is no way to keep that completely irrational level of consumer behavior afloat with anything like a word that we might use like sustainable. There's a problem with the word sustainable is it begs a question which is what are we trying to sustain? What it means to be sustainable is we have an economy that meets real human needs as the fundamental measuring stick of whether or not it is successful. I'm trying to figure out how to live the kind of life that you're speaking of while living in a major cosmopolitan area. That's a great question. And that's the most important thing that we need to think about is what's our leverage right where we are, right? And what I would say to you is start making your own kimchi and sauerkraut that you get from cabbage that you got from a CSA that is delivering in the city and that comes from within a reasonable distance. Start a rooftop garden, start finding local beekeepers, start walking more and biking more. Bring indoor plants into your home that can help clean up your indoor air quality. Grow some mushrooms, do some worm compost, start using urine for fertilizer. Right? Grow stuff for ourselves, connect with community projects, explore beekeeping, connect with farmers in the regional area, stop being tuned into the entertainment matrix so much, start knitting more, start growing more of our own food in containers, right? There's all kinds of stuff to do. That's what's so awesome. There's tons of people here doing it. Get some kefir grains and start making your own fermented foods, right? Why are we eating harvest berry jam? from Washington State and Cedro Woolley when we could be growing that on a farm and starting as micro-enterprise entrepreneurs to finance the new economy. Finance it. Look at the products that are right now dominating a marketplace that we could begin to occupy by being the regional producers. Right? Start that new business. Start that opportunity that you think needs to exist within a more reasonable distance of where people live here. And to say, what does an infrastructure look like that is not so technocratically sophisticated sophisticated, but begins to make use of things that are more holistically integrated. In other words, how do we make use of just the sunlight that's falling on a building when we design the building? Look at our whole way of meeting our needs in a manner that is adapted and well suited to the places that we live. Instead of an infrastructure an economy that is adapted and suited to a global long distance transportation network, but has zero to little attention paid to what's happening regionally as it passes through landscapes all around the planet. And what this new economy is about is about coming home to a place and beginning to create more of our income by being producers who use materials that are sustainably and responsibly harvested from our local landscapes. In terms of this society, beginning to say, I'd rather begin to define what's enough based on not more products, not more entertainment channels, but based on how much good water do I have to drink? How much time do I have today to just enjoy being a human who's alive on planet Earth? Because that's a gift, right? That's a beautiful opportunity that we have to be here now and to be conscious of this power that we have to begin to be intentional rather than accidental tourists who've just been sort of on a ride and not really asking deeper questions about what are we contributing to by participating in a morally and ethically bankrupt economy and culture? And how can we as individual human beings and collectively as a group of people in this society begin to say something to this culture that creates space for us to redefine what is our identity? What does it mean to really 
be a model for the world of a high quality of life. The Occupy Wall Street has created a unique opportunity today in this society for us to begin to ask, what is it that we would rather see? And what I think that direction is, is to begin to participate and to intentionally engage our personal energy in what it is that we would rather see in the world and to disengage from things that we do not want to see continue to exist. And as we begin to collectively as a culture, as more people from more diverse sectors and backgrounds begin to ask that question, what's wrong with this economy and what would I rather participate in, that starts to create momentum for us as a society and as producers and as people who are inspired to create this new culture to be the ones who are the holistic doctors, the naturopaths, the healers, the people who are doing the natural building with local renewable materials, the people who are the medicine people who are growing things and harvesting things, the people who are the fiber people who are making clothes out of flax that's sustainably grown in the Hudson Valley, right? People who are growing the bread in passive solar ovens on rooftops in Manhattan where the wheat was harvested from green roofs. The present economy, the present political system has to change. To begin to transform from what Eisenhower actually called the military industrial complex into something that is truly by the people and for the people. And makes ecological sense, makes social sense, makes economic sense. Where we can clearly see that our air quality is being enhanced, our water quality is being enhanced, the health of the people is being enhanced, and that those things are measurably, incrementally continuing to improve. And as we see those barometers give us that feedback loop, we'll continue to have more inspiration, desire, and energy to participate in this activity that we call an economy.